Are you white or not black? Do you like the boondocks? Even if you're black, please stick around because I may need correcting. I am never going to be able to do justice to describing the show's impact on the black community. So I'm going to put up three videos from black creators talking about this show. The links will be in the description box below. If y'all grew up with Adult Swim, then you probably have many memories about the boondocks. I discovered the boondocks in college and upon first watching it, I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> Even with uh, several sociology classes under my belt, as a white viewer, I, uh, I did not know really exactly how to interpret the show. Essentially, the target audience is not exactly me, but rather I am a witness of the audience that the show is supposed to be for. And in ways, it's for everybody. But a lot of the initial satire really um, didn't land because I just was not prepared exactly for what was to come. I should note that I'm mainly going to be talking about season one because that's the only season I've seen. And really, when people talk about Boondocks, it's really the only season I hear talked about. Though there are technically four seasons question mark but i've only ever heard of two and i've also heard that the first season is the most well liked so here we go the show premiered in 2005 and was in production all the way until 2014. it's based on a comic strip by aaron mcruder that he started all the way back when he was in college in 1999. from what i understand mcruder has a undergrad in African American studies. So his specialty is commentating on black history and black culture. Magruder used the comic and then in turn the show as a way of commentating on the black community from the inside. Being black, living as a black man, he had a lot of thoughts to share. If Boondocks was created by white people, it would 100% be racist. But because it's made by a black creator, it's more of an internal commentary on black culture and its relationship with itself and with the broader society as a whole. One of the huge things that people gripe on the boondocks for as a commentary is their usage of the word. I don't feel comfortable saying it in the show it's used a lot and we're just gonna get it out of the way right now before we go over any other commentary this is Magruder's own thoughts on the usage of the word in his writing I think it makes the show sincere the word is used so commonly now not only by myself but people I know that I feel it's fake to write around it and not use it people tend to get stuck on this point when talking about the show, stopping just right there at the usage of this word and not talking about what the show is really trying to get at is really not doing it justice at all. So what could possibly make a white person uncomfortable watching the boondocks? Well, for starters, the usage of the word, as well as like I said, I think we all have this understanding that media is tend to be made from white creators for a white audience. And so we're used to some of the boundaries that are pushed in this show. Under our default understanding that it's made by white people would be 100% racist. But under the context of knowing that it's made by a black creator, a portrayal of some of the black stereotypes without this understanding of the context as a white person feels awkward and racist. But we have to look at why is Magruder satirizing these ideas overall. What is the purpose? When looking at satire, oftentimes on the surface, it seems mean-spirited. If you have the stomach for a lot of satire and you go deeper into what it means, it's usually totally worth it. And then you're able to appreciate the satire. Upon second watch a few years later, when I started to watch the boondocks more as what is this black creator trying to tell his black audience and then therefore me as a white viewer, it became much more enjoyable for me and a lot less uncomfortable. So 
as an audience member in general, what is Magruder trying to tell us? Before we can get to that, it's probably best to understand exactly what each character represents. The Boondocks is about a young boy named Huey and his little brother, Riley. Both of them live with their grandfather in a majority white suburban neighborhood. It's sort of about how these two boys grow up in this mostly white environment and how both of them interact with their culture and the white culture around them. But really, the more you watch the boondocks, the more you realize, like, each character represents a facet or idea within the black community. So let's break down exactly what these characters represent. The author, McGruder, is very vocal about how Huey and Riley, the two main characters, the two brothers, represent two different sides of himself. Huey is 10 years old and he is a vocal leftist. He is portrayed as having quite radical ideas in the show. He always has this somber demeanor. Um, he's always the voice of reason within the show, even when it's at the detriment of being the person with the hottest take in the room. But he's willing to speak up and critique his own culture, even when the culture around him uh, is not being self-aware at all. What the hell is wrong with you people? Every famous nigga that gets arrested is not Nelson Mandela? Yes, the government conspires to put a lot of innocent black men in jail on fallacious charges. But R. Kelly is not one of those men. We all know the nigga can sing. But what happened to standards? What happened to bare minimum? You a fan of R. Kelly? You wanna help R. Kelly? Then get some counseling for R. Kelly. Introduce him to some older women. Hide his camcorder. But don't pretend like the man is a hero. And stop the damn dancing. Act like you got some goddamn sense, people. Damn, don't play around here. Boo! Hey, you with the afro. Give it a rest. Back on. Yeah, this is a great segue into introducing Riley, Huey's little brother. He represents what the wiki describes as misguided black youth. He is a product of the mass production of black media, especially at the time of the early 2000s. Gangster rap, violence, glorification of firearms. So we see his likeness to his brother Huey and his ability to plan when he wants something and does it effectively. And then we have Robert Jebediah Freeman, or also known as Granddad. Rest in peace, John Witherspoon. Granddad sort of witnesses the well-intentioned older generation. Granddad has been a part of many historical events within the last few decades. The civil rights movement, the Montgomery bus boycott, <laughs> sitting next to Rosa Parks. There are times where you can definitely see where he is a good, loving guardian to his grandchildren. And then there are other instances where granddad's just there for booty, you know? <laughs> he tends to go for younger women, particularly white women. And he also tends to use corporal punishment against Riley. And these are typically shown in like satirical funny moments. But overall, I like Granddad. He reminds me a lot of my own dad. Just that he's well-intentioned, simple man that sometimes just has his moments where you're like, damn, that man's old. And then you have the Du Bois family. You got Thomas and Sarah and Jasmine. Thomas is a, he's an attorney and he is mostly detached from stereotypical black culture. He's married to a white woman. And he kind of represents that like white collar, middle class black man. And in the show, it's joked about how scared he is of law enforcement, how scared he is of jail. He's been scared to death of uh, things that happen to people in jail. His wife is pretty one note. She's just like kind of, she's cool. And then we have Jasmine. She is sort of. I wouldn't say a foil to Huey because technically that's Riley, but where Huey is pessimistic and cynical, Jasmine is naive and optimistic. 
she tend to be seen as naive in that she still believes in Santa Claus. She still believes in the Easter Bunny. And then we have the dreaded Uncle Ruckus. I know that he is a popular character among fans. I'm sorry, I, I cannot stand Uncle Ruckus. I cannot stand him. But he is a black man who is insistent that he is a white guy. He glorifies black slave culture. He is outwardly, vocally racist. He sort of represents the self-hating side of black culture. Oh, Lord have mercy. Security, security. We got a cold black. Cold black at the main gate. Ruckus, what the hell is a cold black? There are some hungry looking niggas at the front gate. The show portrays him as ignorant and gross and stupid. So the show is self aware that uh, Uncle Ruckus is terrible. Who am I to commentate on how black culture should be represented? I can just tell you. He makes me very uncomfortable. I don't find him that funny. But I guess I can appreciate the commentary that he brings to the show in comparison to how the characters treat him. Uncle Ruckus being used as a way to discuss that disassociative, self-hating part of black culture, I guess, and how there's an emphasis, not just an emphasis, but a near worshiping of white people in order to survive. Magruder seems to really like Uncle Ruckus's character, so much so that he wanted to uh, make a Kickstarter film, like a spin-off film for just Uncle Ruckus, but it never got anywhere. And if I had to guess from a writing standpoint for Magruder, the character of Uncle Ruckus is such a ridiculous caricature of an extreme side of the culture that is so self-hating of itself that it's sort of cathartic for viewers in general to laugh at him and at his character. Uncle Ruckus is not there to portray the racist ideas of the writers, but rather he is used to laugh at and to make fun of. Such a toxic facet of the community. For black viewers, they may be thinking of somebody they know who's like this. And for white viewers, they may know a black person like this, but we probably know plenty of non-black people who are just as racist or as Uncle Ruckus that we're able to project onto his character. I think something that we have to take into consideration when better understanding Huey's character as a whole is that he is a mouthpiece for commentary that Magruder is actually making through the character of Huey. And it's coming from this place of introspection that doesn't often get voiced within black media in the black community i think as a whole and because of that especially when huey is there to highlight the flaws and harmful parts of his own culture this food is destructive this food is your culture then the culture is destructive if i had to guess i think this resonates a lot with a lot of young black viewers and as a white viewer, this gives me the opportunity to witness an internal dialogue that I never have exposure to merely because of who I am and what culture I'm a part of. What has never been lost on me is the enormous responsibility that came with the boondocks, particularly the television show and its relatively young audience. It was important to offend, but equally important to offend for the right reasons. For three seasons, I personally navigated this show throughout the minefields of controversy. It was not perfect, and it definitely was not quick, but it was always done with a keen sense of duty, history, culture, and love. Anything less would have simply been unacceptable. Thankfully, a reboot for the show has been announced with Magruder on board. This was announced during the height of the BLM protests that happened in 2020, and it couldn't have come at a more perfect time because if there are voices that we need to hear from currently, it's McGruder, and it's Huey. So now it is time for some of my favorite episodes and moments of the Boondocks. Let's go. So one of my favorite episodes of the Boondocks is the one where Granddad finds out that Riley is going around in the neighborhood and doing graffiti. He signs up Riley for art lessons with this, like, knockoff Bob Ross kind of character. For one, I like that that was Granddad's punishment 
to Riley was to encourage his talents. But at the end of the episode, Huey makes a mural of Granddad and his late wife. And we get to see this moment where Granddad sees graffiti as art for the first time and truly gets to see Riley shine where his talents are most prevalent. It's just a really touching episode. It's a really good example of highlighting somebody's strengths. I also really like the Itis episode. This is an episode where Granddad opens up a soul food uh, restaurant, <laughs> but it's all of the harmful aspects of soul food. It's greasy, uh, bad for you. And people in the neighborhood start getting sick by eating too much of it because it's just so addicting. And it starts towards the end of the episode. Everyone starts becoming addicted to it. It's almost like a drug in a way. And it starts making this block just not a good place to be. Granddad has to look at this harmful part of his culture that he's bringing to people and monetizing. And its effects on the environment as a whole. I also really like the Thugalicious episode where this gangster rapper that Riley listens to ends up getting shot and put into the hospital. And we find out the reason why Thugalicious is on the run is because the people that are after him are his, well, it's his gay ex-lover and his lackeys. We don't find this out towards the end of the episode. Throughout the episode, Riley discovers more and more that Thugalicious is not the person that he portrays himself to be in his music and music videos. It's an interesting commentary on the effects of hip-hop culture from the 80s and 90s into the 2000s, as well as commentary on homophobia within this community and black culture as a whole. And Huey has one of my favorite quotes of all time. Jesus was black. Ronald Reagan was the devil, and the government is lying about 9-11. Thank you for your time, and good night. Ow! Mm-hmm. You having that dream where you made the white people riot, weren't you? But I was telling the truth! How many times have I told you you better not even dream about telling white folk the truth? You understand me? Shoot. Making white people riot. You better learn how to lie like me. So. What can a white audience take away from watching the boondocks? My advice to white viewers who are just getting into the boondocks and don't know what they're getting into is to remember that this is black content made for black people. We are sort of outsiders to that commentary, but it is an important opportunity to take a moment to listen to the commentary and listen to what people within the black community are talking about, what issues they're discussing amongst each other. We can better understand, we can better learn, and besides, the show is entertaining and funny, so like, can't complain there. It's not everybody's cup of tea, that's for sure, it's not everybody's sense of humor or anything, and that's totally fine, but if you're into socio-political commentary and satire, then the show is definitely for you. The show helps give us an insight into how black people view themselves, how they view other black people, how they view their culture, and how this all kind of ties into the overall society as a whole. And learning more about that, something that maybe we don't get exposed to that often, the more listening we do, the better. That's for sure. I'm going to end this video with the infamous Martin Luther King speech. This speech was in an episode. It's sort of like an alternate idea of what would happen if, instead of being assassinated, Martin Luther King Jr. ended up in a coma and didn't wake up for a few decades and suddenly was placed into the 2000s and got to see the state of black culture in that time. In this episode, Martin Luther King says this word and it made a lot of people mad. It made a lot of people uncomfortable. There was an infamous outrage, I guess, from a black reverend who talked about this episode uh, in a sermon, talking about how terrible it was to depict Martin Luther King saying such things. And this is what Cartoon Network had to say on that matter. We think Aaron Magruder, 
came up with a thought-provoking way to not only show Dr. King's bravery, but also of reminding us of what he stood for and fought for, and why even today it is important for all of us to remember that and to continue to take action. This episode ended up getting a Peabody Award for being especially daring, so it worked out in the end. Reason why I'm going to end the video here is because I think this whole speech encompasses the overall theme and commentary of the boondocks as a whole what magruder is trying to say to fellow black people it displays his frustration and his passion and care whatever your thoughts are on what martin luther king says in the speech is probably going to be a summary of your overall takeaway of this show's message so without further ado i'm gonna hand it off to dr king Did he just say what I think he said? Is this it? This is what I got all those ass whoopings for? I had a dream once. It was a dream that little black boys and little black girls would drink from the river of prosperity, freed from the thirst of oppression. But lo and behold, some four decades later, what have I found but a bunch of trifling, shiftless, Good for nothing, niggas. And I know some of you don't want to hear me say that word. It's the ugliest word in the English language. But that's what I see now, niggas. And you don't want to be a nigger. Because niggas are living contradictions. Niggas are full of unfulfilled ambitions. Niggas wax and wane. Niggas love to complain. Niggas love to hear themselves talk but hate to explain. Niggas love being another man's judge and jury. Niggas procrastinate until it's time to worry. Niggas love to be late. Niggas hate to hurry. And now I'd like to talk about soul plane.